Welcome to the tutorial, Drawing with Line Texture. This tutorial is exclusive to Animate Pro and is not applicable to Animate. So to show you how to draw with line texture, I'm going to create a punching bag for the cartoon rabbit that was created in the previous tutorial. So to do this, I'm going to select a textured brush from the preset brush list and then start sketching. Now if we zoom in and then hold down A to momentarily bring up the contour editor tool, we can see that there is a vector contour around the textured line holding in the bitmap texture like an envelope. So this is similar to a regular brush stroke except for the bitmap fill. So now let's explore the, the properties of the texture line in the tool properties panel. If you scroll down, they're just beneath the regular brush properties. I'm just going to expand the window here so that we can see the entire panel. So with the texture brush, it has all the same properties as a regular brush. So the min-max value and the smoothing and the, and the, you know, the brush tip shape are all still applicable. However, it takes on these extra properties at the bottom. So if you disable the enable texture option, you can actually just create regular vector strokes. But this does not work the other way around. If you select a regular brush from the brush preset list and then enable its texture, you'll see that no texture was created here and that's because there's no bitmap loaded in the texture section. The stroke does in fact have a contour envelope with a bitmap fill but this is sort of unnecessarily increasing your file size um, as there's nothing really special about having a black, plain black fill like you would with a regular stroke. So now let's discuss the texture brush properties here. The first two fields are the minimum and maximum opacity. The minimum opacity you could have for either would be zero, but if you did this, you'd just be creating an invisible stroke. The maximum you could have is one, and uh, this gives a nice range, um, a nice softness around your stroke. It's a good range between zero and one. The next uh, option you can manipulate is the hardness. If you increase the hardness, you get a visibly sharper edge. There's no blurring or softness around the edge of your stroke. However, if you decrease the hardness, obviously you get a much softer, blurrier line. And the last property is the texture scaling. So right now it's set at a pretty low number, um, and what this means is the actual, actual texture fill is actually quite small and condensed inside the stroke. If you increase this, you can see that the, the texture inside has kind of been expanded and as a result blurred, um, no longer sharp inside the stroke because it's being scaled at a much greater size. And then finally, we have where you can actually load uh, your texture bitmap. Um, Animate Pro handles uh, PSDs and TGA files. Um, they're the only two acceptable file formats for textures. They handle transparency, but they do not accept color. So if your texture is purple or yellow, it'll bring them in as black and white um, images. And I'm going to show you how to do that when we create our own uh, customized brush which we can do right now. So to create a new brush, you do exactly what you did to create a regular brush uh, for a texture brush, and that's to press on the new brush button here. Um, so we've created brush seven, and then to rename it, we're just gonna click on the A button here, and I'm gonna call this my 
texture brush. Okay. And for my texture brush, I'm going to enable the texture. I'll just keep the default properties here. And I'm going to load a, uh, a new file for the texture. And I'm going to choose this gingham PSD that I have. And as you can see, it's kind of like a checkered or a plaid pattern. So now I have it here. And when I draw my stroke, you can see the, the gingham inside. If I reduce the scaling, you can see even more of the gingham pattern inside of the stroke. Then once again, if I'd like to delete um, this new brush that I created, you just have it have to have it select in the drop down, and then click on the delete brush button to get rid of it from your list. Now let's talk about erasing texture lines. So let's get our eraser from the tools toolbar. And as you can see, some of the properties here at the bottom uh, changed automatically. So right now the Use Blur parameter is on, but I'm just going to turn that off for a second to show you what happens when you don't have any blurring. So if you erase a line here, you can see, if we zoom in, how sharp and unnatural that, that edge looks. If you're trying to create a soft, gradual, uh, blended look, this is pretty jarring. So let's undo that. So when you enable the Use Blur parameters, when you erase a textured line, you can see that it softly erases part of that line. It doesn't create that hard edge. And the difference between using keep vectors, um, having this option enabled and, or not enabled, is that when I created that first, you know, uh, erase here in the line, what I actually did was I split the two um, you know, vector contour envelopes in two. But what if I wanted to keep the same envelope but just have this section of the texture missing? Well, that's what you can use the keep vectors um, option for. Now if I erase and I look at the contour envelope, you can see it's still continuous around the texture line. So that's what those two options are good for. Um, here we have the same parameters we did with the texture brush, the minimum and maximum opacity, which will obviously change uh, the way um, it sort of picks up the texture and erases it. Um, the same with the hardness. The only difference here is that uh, we have something called the um, eraser saturation. Um, and as you can see here, you can still see remnants of the texture because the texture saturation is low. Whereas if I increase the, the texture saturation by a lot, and I made the same sweep with my um, with my brush, my eraser brush here. You can see that it it picked up more of the texture particles and deleted them right away because it's more saturated. It's it's making um, cleaner erases. So I'll bring that back down. So the last thing I'd like to talk to you about is hiding the line texture and adjusting the line texture opacity. But to use these two features, you have to be sure of two things. Uh, first, go into your Preferences. On Mac, that's under the Animate Pro menu, Preferences. On a PC, that's under the Edit menu. Go to the OpenGL tab, and be sure that under the Real-Time Anti-Aliasing heading, that there's no check mark in the Enable option, just like it is shown right here. Then in the Camera view, if you're working in the Camera view, be sure that you have Current Drawing on Top selected. I'm just going to disable these two layers. Then from the menu in the corner, you would select View, Show, Hide Line Texture. And as I mentioned before, because the camera and drawing view are separate, if you're working between the two, you'd have to do the same thing in the menu here. So you'd go to View, Show, Hide Line Texture. And what this is good for is that once you've um, created your character with the stylized texture lines um, and you decide you're going to animate, you can convert to this mode while animating to work more quickly um, and not have the heaviness of the texture line. So let's go back to the way it looked before on both layers, uh, both views. And the last thing I wanted to show you is how to adjust the line texture opacity. 
So from the same menu, you would go to Drawing, Adjust Line Texture Opacity. You get this little slider, these sliders that would show up, and that you can move them around, um, you know, to change the opacity. And once you click OK, you can see that the opacity has significantly darkened on the texture lines. And that works in both views, um, as long as you have the uh, Show Current Drawing on top and the real-time anti-aliasing disabled. So that's it for Drawing with Line Texture. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, Selecting Drawing Objects.